Hi, my name is Samantha and I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, I am Erica Abair. I am from Colleen, Texas. Hi, I'm Danielle and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we'll be discussing the use of a self-management system to increase study behavior. The original study was completed by Breach and Daniels in 2013 and was titled Using Self-Management Intervention to Address General Education Behavior Needs, Assessment of Effectiveness and Feasibility. Um, the study was conducted in a middle school setting. I know that's a lot different from graduate school, but it was a medical, middle school setting and it had um, three participants. The initial intervention phase consisted of each student using a self-monitoring sheet to track their own behavior. Points were earned for meeting their personal goals and could be redeemed for rewards every day or at the end of the week. It really depended on what they wanted to earn. It was specific to each individual. The modified intervention was very similar to the initial intervention phase because it included all the parts of the initial intervention phase and also added a binder to hold all the monitoring sheets to reduce students leaving uh, monitoring sheets behind or losing them. Uh, they also had an increase of points for meeting their daily goals. They had an accountability partner. They calculated their daily average and they graphed their own data on a daily basis. The entire study lasted for nine weeks. Overall, the study concluded that the addition of the self-management tool increased the student's on-task behavior. So for supporting literature, um, so we so we live in a world today where we are very easily distracted because we are we, we have always have a cell phone in our hand. We always are on our computers for work or for other reasons um, or, or any sort of other device we have at our disposal at any time. Um, it certainly doesn't take that much for our attention to be drawn elsewhere. So this can also, if you think about it, it can also translate um, into the classroom. So it could also be true for students. Um, so according to a study by Gettinger and Ball in 2008, Academic engagement is a strong predictor of academic performance. So in other words, if you are on task in the classroom, you have a higher chance of academic success. And on the other hand, Gettinger and Ball feel the opposite is true for students who engage in off-task behavior. Off-task behavior can result in poor academic achievement. So one way to assist students in remaining on task is to use self-management interventions. And according to a study done by Kojol, Kojol, Harrower, and Carter in 1999, self-management interventions help students learn to control their behaviors, which would then facilitate independent work. So according to Rafferty in 2010, there are five um, different types of self-management interventions. One, self-evaluation. Two, goal setting. Three, self-instruction for strategy instruction, and then the last being self-monitoring, which is what we use for our study. Um, self-monitoring is when a student observes his or her own behavior and then records it down um, on a data tracking sheet. Um, according to Cooper, Heron, and Harrod, which may, they feel this is gonna increase, this type of intervention is gonna increase um, students' independence because they're taking their own they're taking their own data and um, focusing on their own um, their own work and then they're they're marking down whether or not they were on task or off task and this is going to increase independence and then decrease the reliance on teachers and paraprofessionals in the classroom and then another great reason to use this type of intervention is because there's not many materials are needed to put this into place and to implement this intervention. So um, you simply need a recording and you could use yes or no type questions. Yes, I was on task, no, I was not, or you can use a Likert type scale. 
Um, timers can be used, a regular timer. Um, we always, there's always um, a cell phone on hand. You can use cell phone timers, which is what we use for our study. And then there's obviously something called a motivator, which um, is worn by a student. Um, you can set the time, um, you can you'd set the desired time that you want to engage in on-task behavior. Once the timer goes off, the student would then record if he or she was on task. So the purpose of our project was to investigate both the effectiveness and feasibility of a comprehensive self-management intervention when used to increase the on-task behavior when studying or doing homework for an allotted time. So um, throughout this presentation, you're going to hear um, some stuff repeated because, you know, this project was very, um, we won't, I'm not going to say simple, but it was very um, manageable because we were able to use the same self-management intervention for three of us. And then one of us being me actually, we used a on, on and off task um, self-management intervention while the others use the scale um, that we will definitely go into more and more throughout this presentation. So obviously the main purpose of this project was to make sure that we're using the self-management intervention provided and we are increasing and we are seeing increasing amounts of on-task behavior while studying, doing homework, or typically whatever we're focusing on for that specific allotted time. Um, to maximize the potential of this project, we observed each other through video chat and inter-observer agreement. Um, again, we're gonna go through this in even more depth throughout the project or this presentation, um, but you know, you're, we're gonna see some limitations and, um, and conclusions, but the inter-observer agreement um, for most part, we definitely did agree at least 80% of the time, but um, there were times that we couldn't due to some limitations, which again, we will get into. Um, all in all, the purpose of this project was to use the self-management intervention and make sure we were seeing an increase of this on-task behavior. All right, so the participants of this replication project are four graduate students. You've already seen us, Samantha, Melissa, Danielle, and myself. For this setting, we chose a location that we were most comfortable with, that we knew that we could get to whenever we wanted to collect our data. Most often, it was our home. Uh, the materials that were used were a motivator and cell phone timers. Myself, I used a cell phone timer and I think Danielle had a motivator on hand, so she used that. Um, we had a self-monitoring sheet that was a yes, no answer sheet. And that was Samantha who used the yes, no answer sheet. And then the rest of us used a Likert scale. And then we, we're just measuring on task behavior, which is the act of completing individual tasks listed in each of our classes modules. On task behavior does not include using our cell phone, speaking with others, eating, etc. You know what off task behavior is, unless it's otherwise specified by specific assignments. For data collection, the three th group members, Danielle, Melissa, and myself, we utilized a six point Likert scale to measure the degree of participation in remaining on task during homework time. And then one group member, which was Samantha, she utilized the yes, no response system to track our behavior. So, Baseline data was collected in a two week span. So that was a total of six sessions. Each session consisted of 30 minutes with five minute intervals. Uh, the treatment phases, the group members determined what a prize would be and if our goal was met. So small prizes, they would be small pieces of candy. Myself, I used a Kit Kat bar, while large prizes would consist of a glass of wine at the end of the day. 
or a piece of pizza. Um, this phase lasted about two weeks, which led into our modified intervention, and that lasted for one week. Our IOA was collected for 33% of sessions. Um, the treatment integrity, that's just the group members meeting to discuss data collection methods. We met at least once a week via video chat, but we were constantly in communication with text messages or emails. Uh, the group, the members created a manageable goal for themselves based on the baseline data results. And we used a self-monitoring system and the point system for the goals that were met. Thank you, Erica. As we can see, the results of my uh, data all together from using the self-management system this semester showed an overall increasing trend after the system was implemented. Um, however, I can't necessarily say it is because of the initial intervention or the modified intervention. As we can see in the baseline phase, I was on task about 70% of the time. All through the initial intervention phase, I was on task 80 to 100% of the time. And in the modified intervention phase, I was on task 100% of the time. Data aside, I did feel that the study helped to increase my overall study behavior because I could actually see when I was fully on task, when I was not on task, or if I was like completely off task doing something else that I did not sit down to do in the first place. So I really liked having the Likert scale. I used a six point Likert scale and it was a scale of one to six. And seeing those sixes was really a motivation for me. Um, it kept me on, on track because I knew I was going to earn those points. I was going to be able to go do uh, and earn the tokens and earn everything that I needed so that I could have a, a good dinner or a glass of wine at the end of the day like I wanted. Okay, so you can see that my baseline also was in the 60s to 70 range. I'm not too thrilled with that baseline. I did encounter a few issues that will reflect in that data. I had set my study time to be at night. So right there, I'm exhausted, tired, and I was studying in my bedroom with the lights off, with my lamp on. So of course, that's not gonna help me do reading. I'm always gonna circle the threes or fours during that. So with those two issues, I felt that they were enough to skew my baseline data, which is in the lower end of what I would like to see. So during the intervention phase, the my points were earned. My goals were, like I said in the previous slide, I would cash in the smaller points for a Kit Kat bar and I would cash in those six points or the higher points for a piece of pizza or a glass of wine. So I could say, okay, if I can get through this particular module, I can have, you know, a glass of wine. And I did see a positive upward trend when I implemented that intervention. And so towards the end of the intervention and the modified intervention, I was scoring about a 98 to 100. So I was quite pleased with that. Thank you, Erica. Um, as you can see from my um, graph, and, and just like Erica said, I also did a lot of studying at nighttime and I was exhausted. So 
Um, during my baseline phase, I was averaging 56% 50 of on-task behavior. Um, and then while I was working on homework, I found myself getting distracted because I was tired and I was getting distracted by the notifications on my phone as well as email notifications like for work. Um, so this would obviously draw my attention away from um, what I was supposed to be working on and I was attempting to complete. I wasn't completely happy with these results. I definitely wanted to improve my on-task behavior doing homework and studying. So during the intervention phase, when we began to earn points, um, for my smaller points, I earned Girl Scout cookies. And for my higher earned points, I earned a glass of wine. So during my intervention phase, as you can see, my on-task behavior increased from an average of 56% on-task to 84% of on-task behavior. And during the modified intervention phase, um, daily points were have increased from one to two, one point to two points. And during the modified intervention phase, my on-task behavior increased again to 92%. Um, I, you know, it really, I did like doing this study. It really, um, I was able to see, wow, you know, like I'm, I'm off during baseline. That was a big eye opener. Like, wow, I'm really not on task as much as I thought I am. And, and I do get distracted so easily when I'm tired. And, um, you know, I found myself, like I said, getting on my phone, checking work email when I was in the middle of doing homework. So this, I did like completing this cause it was a, it, it was an eye opener to, um, my study habits and how often I'm on task. So in my results, um, you can see that um, my baseline was really taken in a matter of three days. Um, as you can see in my three days, I was the same every day. Um, I obviously didn't quite learn the full deal of uh, sitting for 30 minutes studying with um, the least amount of interruptions or distractions. Um, and then I really got into it starting through the fourth and 13th phase. As you can see in that line, it's almost a little variable in the fact that it's um, those up, down, up, down, up, down, um, going from 80% to 100% on task. Um, and then you can just see throughout the end, um, the last three sessions, I continued that 100% on task behavior. And that just continued right into the modified intervention phase. Um, I definitely um, would give myself a nice little um, glass of wine at the end of definitely hitting that 100% of, um, of staying on task. Um, you know, sometimes coming after home from work all day and then coming down to sit for 30 minutes straight. And then not only do that, but have I away once a week and observing someone else doing it for 30 minutes too, um, could be kind of not only overwhelming, but just a lot in general. And so I would definitely take that time to reward myself uh, with a glass of wine or maybe something more of my choosing for that typical night. Um, as far as the study in itself, I really honestly did enjoy this study. Um, because, you know, with so much going on, it's really hard to find that time for 30 minutes at least straight, being such busy grad students working full-time jobs, maybe some of us even being parents or having other commitments other than grad school and work, that sometimes it's really hard to sit down for that a lot of time. And for us, you know, although we definitely did have some difficulties and ups and downs of finding that time period throughout the week, we definitely did. And as you can see, all of our graphs did increase and increase exponentially pretty quickly. Um, so that just shows that we were able to figure it out and manage our time. So in my opinion, not only did we learn how to stay on task for a certain amount of time, but we also learned to manage our time and find that time throughout the day and sit and really get that studying in, which ended up always being a great study session, which sometimes we may not be used to in grad school or try, we always try to get it in, but sometimes it's it's chaotic. Um, so I definitely learned a lot and will be carrying this technique uh, definitely through the rest of grad school and, and on. So in conclusion of our study, uh, the goal of this study was to assess the effectiveness of our interventions um, after reviewing study habits. So. After um, each session, what we would do is sit there and think, okay, how could we have added um, 
How could we have gone to the 100%? How could we have increased our on-task behavior? We would think, okay, definitely for the girls that were using the scale, um, definitely for the girls that were using the scale, we um, were able to determine, okay, how likely or how unlikely we were for on task and then think, okay, what, why did I put that number during that five minute um, break? Um, maybe because someone walked into the room, maybe because uh, we were distracted by our phones going off. Maybe if we're working on our computer, we maybe click that Facebook button instead of, you know, the next question of studying. Um, I think that we were able to, um, after really taking this in and really sitting there working on this, I really do think that we realized those um, those little distractions and we were able to continuously get those distractions out and really just sit and focus for 30 minutes. And you're probably thinking 30 minutes straight, like that shouldn't be hard. Let me tell you, sitting here um, being uh, videotaped with other people or, you know, the days that we weren't doing IOA, just sitting here, no distraction free, sometimes can be a little difficult, especially when you have so much going on. So um, we'll get to get into those type of things in the limitation slide, which is the next one that Danielle will be presenting. Um, but there is definitely um, a, a, an effect of these interventions after sitting there and reviewing our study habits and how can we make it better. So while there was a positive trend in our performance, there were, of course, limitations that we discovered. And again, Danielle will go into detail on that in the next slide. But as you're sitting here uh, listening to what we've already spoken about, I kind of want you to think about what kind of limitations there probably could be. And I know there's going to be some that pop right into your head that, you know, we all live in different states. How are you really getting the, get the best IOA agreement? Um, and so that can definitely be one thing that might have popped into your head just now. And again, Danielle is going to break that down for you in the next slide. Our takeaway from this replication project was that we have established a self-management system that we will most likely take with us in our future. Um, like I was saying in my results slide, um, I'm a full-time teacher and I come home and do travel and I'm having to take certification tests um, per the Florida law. And so it's really hard to get all these things done in a timely manner. And so using this intervention, actually came at the best time. I've been able to not only um, get my studying habits down, but I've also been able to manage my time better of what I know I needed to study when things were due and so on. So um, for example, if I can get all my readings done for this class, I will eat a slice of pizza. And let me tell you, I think we definitely had our um, rewards because we we worked hard and we, we studied. And I definitely know that there's been increases as you we're able to see in our results pages. Thank you, Samantha. As Samantha previously discussed, there were several limitations to our study. The first limitation that I wanna point out is that we conducted all of our IOA data using a video chat format. We, as a whole group, had several sort of technical difficulties that made it difficult to collect accurate IOA data. Some of us would lose connections. Um, other times where we needed to meet for IOA, we couldn't because the time difference, because of living in different states. Like, for instance, Erica lives in Texas. I live in Florida, so does Samantha, so that works out, but Melissa lives in Ohio, and some of us are in different time zones. Um, additionally, studying for 30 minutes is really unrealistic for graduate students. Some of us work full-time. I, myself, I wake up and I go to work in the morning for 7 o'clock, and then I get home at 7 o'clock at night, and I have to do dinner or laundry or whatever and still sit down and sit and do homework for 30 minutes, I really don't look forward to doing it at the end of the day. Um, so that being a limitation, I think that having the self-management system allowed me personally to see what I was doing in that time, in the 30 minutes, like how often I was on task versus off task. And I enjoyed seeing how much my study behavior increased 
just by using this on task um, chart, this self-management chart. Um, a third limitation that I wanted to point out is that we studied in our homes where it is quiet, we're comfortable, we all have our places where we do our homework. I have, I don't quite have an office, but I do have a desk and that's the only place that I do my homework. So if I'm there, I know I'm doing my homework and that's just something that I've been um, using for several years, ever since I was an undergraduate. Um, a fourth takeaway, a uh, fourth limitation that I wanted to discuss is that as his grad students, we multitask and it may look off task to others. And this is because, like I said, most of us work. We also have families. Some of us have children. Some of us have pets. And so sometimes, even though we are doing our homework, we need to tend to them for a second or two or maybe even a couple of minutes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to get our homework done. We're in graduate school and we have developed our own study habits over time. Um, so like I said, this is multitasking and that may look a lot off task to other people. Additionally, we did not want to change the original study too much. The original study was conducted using middle school students in a typical education classroom. They did the study for 30 minutes at a time. Me personally, when I do my homework, I sit down and I study sometimes an hour or two. And yes, I get up and down and I do different things while I'm doing my homework, but we did not want to change the original study. So for the purpose of this, some of my data might not have been fully on task because of the operational definition and um, everything that we did. Thank you guys. So on behalf of myself and my group mates, I just want to um, thank you guys for all watching our video. We thoroughly enjoyed um, replicating this study. It sure taught us a lot. Um, it was, like I said, it was eye-opening for myself um, to look at my own study behavior. Um, because after all, you know, I'm in education, I'm an intervention specialist. I I'm constantly taking data on students and their um, on task and off task behavior. So it was definitely nice to put the, um, you know, to, to wear that hat and to um, take a look at my own um, on task behavior. So thank you again. Um, we hope you enjoyed this presentation. And the last slide includes our references. Thank you.